Gigant science is, uh, is a new field wherein uh, we try to demystify science. We concentrate on various activities and uh, in-house concepts where we have science museums uh, consisting of uh, models based on the basic principles of science, of technology, of engineering. And uh, these are, it's an attempt to make science and technology easier for the layman, a person who doesn't know anything about science. And it acts as a supplement for school students, for their curriculum, what they teach, what they learn at school. So this works out, uh, we try to supplement that. And it is the non-classroom based learning. And there's a lot of fun. So the child doesn't even think that he's in a learning situation. And he learns by doing things himself. The purpose of uh, what uh, science museums try to do is to attract people with having a lot of uh, fun and uh, interaction and uh, a new sense. It's like uh, going outdoors, going visiting a new place and at the same time they learn something. And uh, the activities which uh, science museum has tries to go out from the museum itself which is a fixed structure go out to the villages, go out to the streets with uh, exhibitions, with uh, uh, demonstration lectures, with teaching aids, etc. It goes out to people and it uh, attempts to organize a sort of exhibition where uh, people come in from all walks of life and learn about uh, something which uh, affects their daily life, which they never knew about. And here they have an opportunity to see it in action and to work it out for themselves. See, it uh, all started with uh, static models, where uh, it was sort of a training center for engineering workshops, where they had cutaway sections of engines, they had uh, old computers, where students could come and learn more about it. And then the people had an idea, why couldn't this be displayed for the common masses? Uh, but those models were basically static initially. and. Uh, since a lot of junk was coming out, like computers was uh, it's changing day by day. You had old machines, which had to be, which could be exhibited and could be used fruitfully. So that was the beginning of the science museum, as such. Later, we came to something called uh, animated exhibits, which uh, had an uh, emphasis on industry and technology, where we had uh, a lot of animation, and uh, it came as a concept of a museum. Where a museum, we, we have a lot of graphics, we have a uh, lot of uh, emphasis on aesthetics as such. And then slowly, and they built in as an ordinary museum, as an art museum, where you have uh, uh, panels and a regular visitor flow. And they tried to incorporate the uh, science museum into the same, pos same type of thing. We had uh, inbuilt exhibits, like uh, we have an aluminum plant. So it shows you inside, it is a miniature plant which uh, there's a lot of automation here. You see the ore coming in and there are lights, there are, there's polarized light used to show from the ore stage where it goes to the next stage and then the final how it comes out in the form of sheets, rods, tubes, etc. So this whole thing was animated. All you had to do was press a button and then things started happening inside. But this thing required a guide because uh, it's a huge concept, uh, an aluminum plant as such. And you couldn't explain everything by the means of a label. And you don't expect people to read that much. The science museum wasn't uh, intended for a reading place or a library where it was. We expected people to do a lot of reading. So there was a guide to explain things. And then this went on in a regular flow. And then uh, it uh, attracted people. But uh, it had one of its uh, weaknesses was that what people were more interested in the animation which was going on inside. And the uh, small uh, trolleys and the uh, wheels which they saw moving. And they were more interested in that and more amazed and wonderstruck by what all happened inside the exhibit as such than the actual concept which was being tried to be portrayed. Plus the museum had a lot of other distractions as we could put it. We had uh, uh, heavy graphics, a lot of uh, uh, I mean paintings and uh, sculptures and all interacting. So the visitor was impressed, but uh, whether he could, uh, he would really understand the principle, basic principle which was trying to be explained, uh, we couldn't uh, actually judge. We have a couple of museums, the first museums which were built in India were based on these concepts. And uh, we have the first museum in India which was built uh, in Pilani, Birla Museum Pilani, 
It was a house in the campus of the Birla Institute of Technology and Science and it is still one of the best maintained museums in India. It has a lot of uh, such models, very beautiful graphics and uh, a lot of the, the animation. The animation in fact is the best anywhere around the world which has been uh, incorporated the Birla Museum Pilani. The concept which came later after that was uh, sort of participatory mu museum where they tried to increase that interaction of people when they realized that uh, this sort of a thing was not helping out much to the cause which was the demystifying science, demystifying technology because people uh, sort of didn't gain much after they came out of these places. They were wonderstruck, they were amazed by the whatever was happening inside but uh, as to how much they learned of science it's, itself was and this uh, concept was developing around the world, uh, one of uh, participatory museums where you had less animation, less inbuilt animation and more of uh, people oriented animation where they had some work to do. There were more buttons, they had to, I mean, uh, they cut down the structures where they increased the amount of interaction, there were some handles to pull, but still everything was behind a glass screen. Whereas, uh, as far as the mechanical engineering concepts and the concepts of physics, basic mechanics which were being trying to explain, there there was uh, more interaction, but when it came to electronics and uh, uh, exhibits from biology and chemistry, it was still behind the screens. We have uh, examples of uh, the museum at, uh, at Bangalore, Vishweshwaraya Industrial and Technological Museum, then at uh, Calcutta, Birla Industrial and Technological Museum. These were the one of the first museums in the country and as far as industrial and technological museums go they still are one of the best and uh, as I said I was telling you about uh, the magic concept in the thing there's a one of the first exhibits at Calcutta happens to be a tap where you just see a tap hanging in the air and there's water flowing out and people are amazed by it it's something like magic for them and when they see that there's a pipe right inside it and it is an exhibit on refractive on the refractive index of a plastic pipe which uh, we find that hardly any people ever realized what was the principle behind it but they were struck by it and they went and told people around that there's such a tap which water flows out but there's no obvious connection to the pipe behind somewhere and then uh, later we had uh, uh, actually the uh, council for scientific and industrial research with its laboratory, National Physics Laboratory at Delhi. They start, there's a group of people there started thinking about uh, science museums and uh, demystifying uh, science and mainly physics as such. And uh, they, a small group of people started, they took up over the Birla Industrial and Technological Museum and ultimately it developed into what is called the National Council of Science Museums today, which is a very big network of museums around the country and which has built up on a large scale. They have more than 18 science museums around the country at various levels. And uh, they are even uh, exporting exhibits abroad, building museums for people abroad in Australia and Mauritius. They have uh, four national science centers, which are very large scale museums at uh, VITM at Bangalore and uh, Birla Industrial and Technological Museum at Calcutta happen to be two of these. Besides this, uh, we have uh, one at Bombay, the Nehru Science Centre and the latest is the National Science Centre at Delhi and then uh, they, besides this they have uh, regional science centres at uh, state headquarters which uh, they build in collaboration with the state councils of science and technology where the state government has a, some share in the, they provide the land and some of the infrastructure there and the National Council of Science Museum develops it and manages the place and then the third level they have is what what is called the district science centers where this are the district levels and they try to deal with the exhibits which uh, are area specific for that district like there's one in Thirunil Valley <coughs> which is quite near the ocean so they have a gallery on the oceans and uh, how waves are formed how tides are formed so they try to make exhibits which are area specific and then they have something attached to the national science centers uh, and the regional science centers called the mobile science exhibitions which are buses which uh, have a lot have uh, about uh, 24 uh, exhibits each each bus has about 24 exhibits based on one theme and these buses chart out a program 
in consultation with the state uh, and the district authorities and they have about two more tour of about two or three months they stay a day or two in every village or school and uh, exhibit these uh, models and the headquarters are based in calcutta now right now national council of science museums and then uh, the latest concept which has just recently started is the concept of uh, interactive science museums and it's in fact it's called an interactive science center because no longer we think of it as a science museum because as soon as you say the word museum you think about uh, something which is uh, preserved something from the past which has been preserved and exhibited but uh, here the principle is the emphasis is on basic science on the latest science so it's more of an interactive science center and uh, it's called hands on science where you have models which are stripped bare everything is open there is no hidden mechanism there is no hidden parts people come they read they interact and they learn for themselves there are hardly any guides if you need additional information there are people around who are going to help you but we leave everything is left open the birla science center at hyderabad is the best example of this where uh, this was inaugurated in march 1990 and uh, there were experts who came from the united uh, kingdom and uh, they interacted with the local staff and this concept was uh, given fruit here for the first time and it has had a very good response it's uh, one of the best museums in the country today what people appreciate about it is that uh, there is a, when you take a child in there you don't restrict it to anything the child can do anything he likes he can break he can do anything and uh, by that process they learn we have exhibits on uh, pulleys where we all seen pulleys but we don't know how where it is used so we have exhibits where they can increase speed decrease speed or you can use it in a sort of a lift where a child sits in a chair and lifts himself up where we have a third system of pulleys and uh, the effort becomes about 1/6 so even a small child a 5 year old child can sit in a chair and lift himself up reducing effort that way there's a lot of noise in these sort of museums there's a very less emphasis on aesthetics there is an emphasis because we have to attract people but it's not the main concern it's more on basic science that people touch people learn and they are allowed to break to do anything they feel like so that because uh, science is basically experimentation people have to touch things people have to experiment with things and only then they can learn it is one thing where you feel for yourself and uh, feel the effect for yourself and it's another thing when somebody tells you about a certain thing and that this happens because of this when you really do it and feel it like the exhibit on levers where the lever for the same load we have three lever arms so the longer the lever arm the easier it is to lift a certain object now this we have studied in physics we have heard about the fulcrum the load arm the lever arm everything but here we see it really in action where uh, the longer the lever arm a person it's easier for a person to lift so this is on uh, interactive science centers which is now taking form around the country and some museums are coming up the national council of science museums is a central government organization which is the main uh, body building museums around the country and then you have some private museums there has to be a sort of a national policy on uh, science museums where uh, a specific role has to be defined and uh, a specific people have to be catered to where the galleries have to be specific we have basic science we have interactive science center which is basic science which is uh, doing its job where we have uh, visitors for lay people and students coming in and uh, but even then there is a limitation about uh, area about space as to the number of uh, exhibits you can uh, display and the amount of uh, uh, the course or the curriculum which you can cover it has to be supplemented by activities and by and each museum should complement each other around the country or specifically if the museum is around the state there should be like if people visit one museum and another museum they shouldn't say that we've already seen these exhibits so uh, something of that sort should be there there should be more coordination among museums so that there's a less of repetition and uh, more interaction if somebody develops something like there are some concepts which are very hard to portray and uh, there are certain museums which achieve success but sometimes they don't have the funds to do 
put it into action. The prototype works, but uh, they don't have the funds to really put it into action. So, museums uh, should have, there should be some coordination among them where uh, we can uh, have a, a more consolidated sort of uh, approach towards this uh, fun-based learning. And then uh, there's a new concept coming in uh, of uh, concept of science parks, where you have outdoor models and uh, we blend it with nature. We have a lot of, like uh, the science park I work for right now in Rajasthan, it has a section, the whole uh, uh, park is scattered with medicinal plants, showing the medicinal uses. Then there's a section on uh, minerals, display of mineral samples. And then uh, we have certain playground exhibits, which have no science at all, it's just play. And then uh, there are models which are scattered around the park. So it's, in fact, uh, when we say it's a playway method of learning, it's more in the science park where as soon as a child reaches a playground, he thinks of playing. And uh, in the same, when he's playing, if he learns, that's the best we can do for him. Because when a museum also has its limitations because when he enters, most of the students which come, who come, come in a school group. So back of their mind, it's there that class teacher is there, the group is there that they have to, they are coming here to learn. But in a science park, they are free, they, are, they know a playground and they know to play. So that is more of a, that's a, one of the new concepts. We have a limitation in science park, we cannot uh, display much of electronics, uh, electrical works. It has to be mainly mechanical. Exhibits have to be weatherproof, so we have a limitation as uh, far as the uh, material we use. Then uh, it depends on the weather. We can't, uh, like uh, in the heat of Rajasthan in the daytime, it's impossible to visit such a place. But even then, it is uh, something learning with nature and uh, it's a concept which is growing right now. The Science City is being built by the National Council of Science Museums in Calcutta and it has a very modernistic uh, architecture and it's uh, going to be a place where we are it's going to be a view to the world of the latest in indian science and technology from the ancients as we know india had a big very good heritage in the field of uh, vedic astronomy and uh, in the field of medicine ayurvedic medicine and uh, a lot of other things where mathematics etc so all these two are we going to display it there. It's going to be a central exhibition making facility. It's going to be a lot of research and development done, be done out there. And uh, it's a place where people can spend a day or even a couple of days. And it's all science and it's all fun, the fun way to learn science.